The gentleman from Massachusetts is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the gentlelady from Indiana for yielding me the customary 30 minutes, and I yield myself such time as I may consume. Mr. Speaker, you would think that for the very first week back of the new year, House Republicans would try to correct course and fix their failing majority. You would think that after presiding over one of the most unproductive, ineffective, incompetent sessions of Congress in history, certainly since I've been here, that Republicans would use the new year as a fresh start, to reset their priorities, and to actually work with Democrats to get stuff done. You would think that they would bring to the floor some big, important piece of legislation to follow through on their promises, or, I don't know, a bill to stop the government shutdown that's right around the corner. You would think all of that, but you would be wrong. Because today, we are here for the first meeting of 2024 to consider more junk, more filler, more nonsense messaging bills that do nothing to help everyday people. Bills that seek to help their billionaire friends and corporate sponsors. First is H.R. 788, the so-called Stop Settlement Slush Fund Act. This bill stems from a fruitless Republican-led investigation based on meritless allegations of political bias when the Obama administration's Justice Department held big banks accountable for their predatory lending practices. After a full year in the majority, Republicans still have no, idea, have no new ideas or real agenda to help the American public. So they want to pass off this solution in search of a problem from 10 years ago as some big, important new bill. It's not big, it's not new, and it's definitely not important. It's a waste of our time. Then we have SJ Res 38. This joint resolution is House Republicans' attempt to weaken President Biden's Buy America requirements, allowing federal dollars to be spent on chargers made in competitor countries like the People's Republic of China. While Democrats and President Biden work to bring jobs back from China, Republicans are eager to do the bidding of billionaire corporations and ship jobs overseas to China. Now let that sink in. Finally is H.J. Res 98, a resolution that blatantly attacks workers. This bill would weaken their ability to organize and collectively bargain. These three bills have one thing in common. Mr. Speaker, they will not become law. They are going nowhere, and they are a waste of our time. The way this place is being run is just so, so absurd. It is pathetic. We are facing a partial government shutdown by the end of next week. The extreme MAGA Freedom Caucus is once again eager to, to shut it down. Now, maybe they think a shutdown will help crash the economy, like Donald Trump uh, uh, has said he wants. The, the leader of the Republican Party spent the week praying for the economy to collapse because he thinks it will help him win the election in November. Imagine that. And that really illustrates the difference between Democrats and Republicans. We want America to succeed no matter who is in charge because we love this country and we put people over politics. But Republicans led by Trump are cheering for America to fail and for everyone to suffer because they think it will help them politically. What a sick, twisted, messed up ideology. They are literally cheering for America to fail. And I guess they think that maybe if they shut down the government, uh, that that will help. I, I heard that the current speaker was on the telephone with Donald Trump, basically begging him to support the deal to fund the government. Because, you know, Let's be honest, that's who runs this place, Donald Trump and the MAGA extremists who worship him. That's the guy, by the way, whose lawyers argued in court yesterday that he can legally assassinate any of us and he can't be held accountable because the president is above the law. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? Not a peep, not a whisper from any of my Republican colleagues, not a single one of them who is willing to stand up and display some courage and say that the former president should not be above the rule of law. So we may be back, Mr. Speaker, and it may be a new year, but it's clear that it's the same old Republican majority trying to distract from their own disarray and division and doing the bidding of Donald Trump instead of working for the American people. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I reserve my time.